Driving quickly is never quite as simple as it seems and requires a number of different elements all to be working in harmony. There are a number of techniques used by drivers, both in real life and sim racing, that help them achieve faster lap times and better results. Here at Traction, we want to try and give you as much insight as possible when it comes to racing technique, in order to help you become a better driver. So today, I'm going to tell you about a fairly advanced braking technique that may well help you bridge the gap between quick and very quick lap times. This technique is something called trail braking. The usual advice when it comes to braking is to brake hard in a straight line when you're heading into a corner, then lifting off the brakes and turning in. Although this is solid advice when you're learning the ropes, it's not always the best way to take a corner. I'm going to explain exactly why trail braking is such an important skill to master if you're looking to make the next step, and then show you how and when to use it. Before we jump into the video, why don't you subscribe to the Traction channel? We have tons of useful videos for you guys to check out, and trust me when I say there are plenty more to come. The best place to start is by contextualising the term to understand what it means. The word trail in this instance is referring to the verb trailing, which could also be described as dragging. Think of it this way, if someone said, I had to drag my partner away from their sim rig this evening, it's inferring that there was some resistance, but they were pulled along anyway. This is a bit like trail braking. You are dragging the car into a corner using steering angle whilst maintaining a little bit of resistance via the brake pedal. As I said at the beginning, you're normally told to do your braking in a straight line, and then turn in afterwards, and there is good reason for this. There is of course a limit to how much grip a tyre can give you before it begins to slide, and with racing cars, this grip has to be shared out between lateral forces, cornering, and longitudinal forces, i.e. acceleration and deceleration. The more you are turning the steering wheel, the less grip you will have to be able to accelerate or decelerate, and vice versa. Back at the start of January, we did an experiment to see what it would be like to drive a front-wheel drive Formula 1 car. This video demonstrates this theory perfectly. Because the front tyres were struggling to do two things at once, in this case accelerate and turn at the same time, they were struggling to cope. If I applied no throttle and turned the wheel, the car turned no problem. And equally, if I accelerated without applying any steering lock, the car accelerated. But as soon as I tried to do both things at once, accelerating and turning the wheel, the tyres couldn't cope and I would lose all grip, unable to turn properly or accelerate away cleanly. I had to really balance the car and only use a little bit of throttle when I was also steering, in order to avoid overworking the tyres. By focusing on one thing at a time, braking first, then steering, you're only asking the tyres to cope with one heavy force at a time, giving you decent levels of grip in both phases. And this is why the regular braking technique works. It's safe and allows you to stay within the limits of the available grip. However, by doing this, you aren't exploiting the full potential of the tyre, and if you're looking to go as quickly as possible, you need to maximise every opportunity where extra grip is available. And that is where trail braking comes in. This technique allows you to use more of the tyre's potential grip during the braking phase and corner entry. As you begin to turn in for a corner, instead of quickly jumping off the brake pedal and turning the steering wheel, maintain a little bit of pressure on the brakes at the same time as you begin to turn. Then, as you need to apply more and more steering lock, slowly ease your foot further off the brake pedal to avoid overworking the tyres. By doing this, you're able to use more of the available grip heading into the corner, allowing you to carry more speed and therefore gain lap time. However, if you try and use too much steering angle with too much brake pressure still applied, you will have the same problem that I suffered in the front-wheel drive Formula 1 car. The tyres will be unable to cope with the lateral loads from turning and the longitudinal loads from decelerating. Essentially, this whole process is one big balancing act. It's balancing the grip usage of the tyres between turning and decelerating, but it's also balancing the car from front to back. This is another crucial aspect of trail braking and is probably a little easier to wrap your head around. When braking for a corner, the balance of a car changes as the weight moves over the front wheels and away from the back of the car. This can be useful when you're heading into a corner as having more weight on the front of the car means that your front tyres will have more grip, meaning the car will turn in better. Basically, in this context, to simplify things a bit, think of weight and grip as the same thing. By applying a little bit of brake pressure as you're turning into the corner, you can influence the amount of weight that transfers from one end of the car to the other. Because of this, you as a driver can control the weight distribution of the car from front to back, with your foot as you enter a corner. This is a skill you do not want to waste. Imagine you're heading towards a long, medium speed corner. Let's use the Albretto curb at Monza, formerly known as Parabolica. When you initially hit the brakes in a straight line, you use a lot of force on the pedal to slow down as quickly as possible. At this moment, all of the weight is pushed towards the front of the car. If you suddenly lift off the brakes, the weight shifts backwards and this change can unbalance the car. It will also mean that the front of the car will have less grip because there is less weight, and the rear of the car has more grip because there is more weight. This will often cause natural understeer as the front tyres can't give you the grip you need when you turn into the corner, meaning you run wide, miss your apex, and the Ferrari F1 team won't want to hire you as their driver. 
Now let's go back to the initial braking zone and look at the other end of the scale. This time you brake later and apply too much braking pressure as you start to turn into the corner. The front tyres aren't able to cope with the combination of heavy braking and sharp turning at this speed, so you will experience a lockup. Ideally then, when you turn into a corner you want to have enough weight over the front of the car to give you lots of grip and allow you to hit your apex, but not too much that you overload the front tyres and lock up. The brake pedal then, as I said before, can effectively be used to control this weight transfer and give you the perfect balance heading into a corner. All of this, of course, depends on the type of car and the setup. Front wheel drive cars will react differently to rear wheel drive cars. Brake bias can also hugely influence the outcome during a braking zone, as will the levels of grip available. An F1 car with lots of downforce on slick tyres in the dry will have a totally different grip threshold to a hot hatch on road tyres in the rain, despite what most young men in Britain seem to think. So then, the next question is how do I know when to trail brake? Generally speaking, it's a more beneficial technique to use in slow or medium speed corners, and in particular, long corners. Let's take the circuits in ACC as an example. Some of the best examples of standalone trail braking corners are turns 2 and 5 at the Hungaro Ring, and Brooklands and Luffield at Silverstone, as well as the aforementioned Alberetto Curve. All of these corners are long in length and medium or low speed. However, arguably the most important time to use this technique is when you are approaching a section where one corner acts as the braking zone for the next. Turns 1 and 2 at Suzuka are great examples, or curve a Tramonto at Misano. You can gain so much time here with good trail braking as you can carry decent speed through the first corner while still being able to maintain a good balance and decelerate sufficiently on the ideal line for the next corner. Arguably the best track overall for practicing this technique is Snetterton, especially the 200 layout if your chosen sim has it. Turn 2, the Montreal hairpin, requires a bit of trail braking to get the car rotated at the apex. Then, turns 4 and 5, or Brundle and Nelson, can be taken at a much higher speed with good technique. Get the balance wrong and you will either understeer off to the right, or oversteer and spin off to the left. The final section, turns 7 and 8, or Corum and Murray's, also require a bit of trail braking, as you need to slow the car down as late as possible through Corum, while still maintaining the optimal racing line into Murray's to maximise your exit speed. So, despite it being a short lap if you're using the 200 layout, there are three tricky and unique spots to practice your trail braking technique. Another reminder that not all cars and setups will suit, or even require trail braking. Oversteery front wheel drive cars are already very front end focused, so might not be able to cope with extra brake pressure, whilst a rear wheel drive car that's understeery might need you to trail brake further and harder into the corner in order to get the required rotation at the apex. Ok, I think it's about time to summarise all of this information. Trail braking is about maintaining a little bit of brake pressure as you turn in for a corner, and adjusting this pressure as you increase your steering angle, in order to control the balance of the car. This not only gives you more control of the balance from front to rear, but also allows you to use all of the available grip from your tyres at any given moment. Trail braking is most useful in slower, longer corners, and when it works, the benefits of trail braking can be seen throughout every phase of a corner. Firstly, you can brake later and carry more speed as you enter the corner, because you are maximising the available grip of the tyres. Being able to control the balance of the car means you can prevent potential spins or understeer by adjusting the brake pressure as you are turning in. This also allows you to rotate the car better in order to hit your apex, and this, in turn, leads to you getting on the power earlier and better corner exit speeds. And now you know why trail braking will take your driving to the next level. So, that's it for my trail braking guide, but if you do have any questions about any of this stuff, do let us know in the comments below. And also, whilst you're there, let us know if there are any other advanced driving techniques you would like to see covered on the Traction channel. Subscribe for more racing game content in the future and hit the notification bell to see our videos as they are released. But until next time, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.